And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Thank you for joining us today on the aviation portion of your broadcast. Again, the red notes IFR conditions, which is instrument flight rules, which indicates it's a little more challenging for aircraft to fly due to lo lower visibilities and uh, lower ceiling conditions. So as you can see on Wednesday morning, we have widespread IFR conditions across much of the bearing associated with the low pressure system in the area. We also have widespread IFR conditions along the Gulf of Alaska and into portions of the Panhandle due to a weakening low pressure system in the area. Finally, up north, we do have some uh, low stratus and fog associated with a high pressure system along the North Arctic coast. By Wednesday afternoon, uh, again, we still have widespread IFR conditions. Much of the interior remains uh, in good visibility conditions, uh, with the exception of some of the eastern mountains. Uh, watch out for MVFR conditions. Um, and as we go in towards the Gulf of Alaska, again, we're expecting IFR conditions. For your Thursday morning, we're expecting widespread IFR conditions across much of the Bering, and we are also expecting uh, the stratus to linger into Thursday morning as well along the Chukchi and the North Arctic coasts. By Thursday afternoon, the low pressure system starts to push in further inland. So we are expecting lower visibilities along much of the, the Bering coast and in portions of the Chukchi and along the Arctic coast. Meanwhile, that low pressure system continues to linger in the Gulf of Alaska, producing some IFR conditions and even some MVFR conditions along some of the coastal and mountain areas uh, located near that low. Let's take a look at your pass conditions. For Anaktuvik Pass, we're expecting MVFR conditions for Wednesday. Adagain Pass, again, we're expecting MVFR conditions. Blake Clark, we're expecting MVFR conditions that are going to improve to VFR conditions by the afternoon hours. Rainy Pass will have MVFR conditions. Windy Pass will start at, at MVFR conditions and improve to VFR conditions by the afternoon hours. Isabel Pass is expected to have MVFR condi conditions for your Wednesday. Um, and Tasta Pass is expected to have MVFR conditions throughout your Wednesday as well. Tahina Pass is expected to start out as MVFR conditions with an improvement to VFR conditions by the afternoon hours. Portage ex is expected to start at NVFR conditions, but improve towards VFR conditions as that stratus improves through the afternoon hours. Same at the Panhandle. We're going to start at IFR conditions at Chilku Pass, but improve to NVFR conditions by your afternoon hours. Let's take a look at your freezing levels across the state. The coolest air is uh, located uh, in the North Arctic coast. We're looking at uh, freezing levels at about 8,000 feet. As we go further east, you can see uh, near the Yukon, uh, temperatures warm. We're looking at your freezing levels are about 12,000 feet. As we go west, uh, we're getting a little bit of warm air associated with that low. So we're looking at freezing levels at about 14,000 feet across much of the Bering Sea. For Wednesday, let's take a look at your icing conditions. Again, associated with that leak, weak low pressure system, we're expecting isolated moderate uh, freezing conditions, or excuse me, icing conditions uh, out in the Bering Sea and in portions of the Aleutian Islands. And that's at above 14,000 feet. As we're looking at some of our interior locations uh, with some of those showers out east, we are looking about, again, a chance for isolated moderate conditions for icing. Uh, similar stories, we go to that weakening system in the Gulf of Alaska. There could be some isolated moderate uh, icing with that system. Let's take a look at your jets. At about uh, 30,000 feet, we're looking at winds about 80 knots uh, south of Kodiak Island and across um, much of western parts of the state, 75 to 65 knots. We have a slightly stronger jet of about 90 knots as we go towards the western Bering Sea. At uh, 9,000 feet, again, you can see that jet uh, more strongly. We're looking at uh, 65. I should say the jet is not stronger, but it's very well defined. And we're looking at about 60 knots, 65 knots across portions of the central and western bearing. As we go further east, south of Kodiak Island, we're looking at winds at 9,000 feet between uh, 35 to 40 knots across uh, the western Gulf of Alaska. So we finally reached down to 3,000 feet. Again, the, the 35 to 40 knots uh, jet just south of uh, Kodiak Island and into portions of the Alaska Peninsula. 
Meanwhile, that uh, low-level jet is still intact at about 3,000 feet. We're looking at about uh, 55 to 65 knots across portions of your western bearing. As a result, we get some uh, considerable moderate turbulence across portions of the western and central Aleutian Islands. And again, associated with that jet, we were talking about south of Kodiak Island. We are expecting to see um, uh, surface to 4,000 feet considerable moderate turbulence along the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island.